Sticky Trifle Podcast. Sticky Trifle Podcast. Sticky Trifle Podcast. Welcome to the Sticky Trifle Podcast. Hello, Dennis. Um, you know, there's a little loony coming, so you'll have to watch him. All right. All right. Okay. All right, bye. Sticky, Sticky, Sticky Trifle, Trifle Podcast. Podcast. And, uh, welcome to the Sticky Trifle Podcast. Um, oh, I feel like I'm at home. I feel like I'm at home. Abdi Ken's for you. Well, I think Abdi Ken's for you. It's quite a popular business. Dennis Forsyth. Mm-hmm. And obviously, we're at Cheers. Mm-hmm. Um, we might as well have a Cheers kind of conversation, right. should we? Thank you. This is uh, Punk. You're a big fan of Brewdog, by the way. I'm just pointing out it's alcohol free. It's al- alcohol free because lockdown has been happening. We're a wee bit worried about how people see things coming. Um, now, listen, last time we met, had a proper conversation, mm-hmm. was on my radio show, Sanctuary. Mm-hmm. And we're speaking a good 18 years ago. Aye, it's been a while. So Time flies. And we're still alive. Mm-hmm. So we're doing all right, Dana. We're doing all right. A few um, behind us. Now, great to be here. Uh, I just, I feel, this feels really comfortable for a start, and uh, you've you've always been that guy. You're always happy to meet folk, and I notice you you do a, a bit for a community yourself. You're always, you've always been a guy that likes to push things, and my my, my place is better. Would I be right saying that? I it, it was we're vision to try and do something with this business uh, from a, about 15 years ago. I saw a lot of potential in it, uh, it namely at the beginning it was the smoking ban had come in place mm-hmm. and we knew we had to cater for, at the time there was a lot of smokers, uh, so with the outdoor area and we improved it and we improved it to such a, a standard that we actually won um, several awards for the, the smoking facility, we actually went down to London and won the, the best smoking facility in, in Britain. What fun um, was this, 2000 and? That was a few years ago now, but I think it was 20... 13 or 2014, mm-hmm. um, and we were apparently the only pub outside London to have won the award. Uh, wow. At that time, um, the the whole area was o- open plan. The, you, even at the bar, you could have smoked at the bar. I'm not obviously advocating smoking, but at the time, there was a lot of smokers, mm-hmm. and uh, we we did what we thought was was best for them. I mean, it was still an open plan. A lot of people could go out and, and, and drink and join the smokers, etc. There's been a big change over the last few years. I mean, there's been a huge a, a change in the numbers in, in, of smokers. But um, at, at that time, I wanted to do something different. And then we've just followed that on, uh, just adding more and more to the business to try mm-hmm. and improve it. We um, we changed, the, the fl- there was a flat, and we converted that into rooms and called it Cheers Tavern, and that's been, uh, that's been popular. Mm-hmm. And then, from there, we kind of developed the, the interior of the, the, the business. 
Mm -hmm. uh, there's been one job after another. So basically, uh, when business has been successful. We've just um, reinvested the, the the profits back into the business to make it a, a, a better um, business all round. And a few years ago now, it's, it's amazing that it's, it's six years ago that uh, we, we purchased a high street uh, business, which is going to be our next big project. Which I heard about. Has the word been a cafe? Is it? Is it going to be a cafe and a restaurant? Am I right saying that? No. no. No, um, ah. I think that's not where uh, that's not where strong point. Um, I think um, being a social hub, uh, a place for everybody to come, um, and uh, um, it, but, but obviously there were drinks. We've got we've got a fantastic range of drinks which have been um, nationally recognised for as well. Uh, when I saw the, the opportunity to develop that, that building, I saw uh, as and a means to um, expand the business and have a better outdoor area, which was, was the plan. Plus also to get an access from High Street into, into Cheers, so and there'll here, be the two yeah. access, okay. access points. You can come in from Broad, the, the Broad Street and you can come in from High Street. The building itself, we've, it's taken some time for us to decide what we would do with it. And the way I see things now, and with the development of a range of um, um, liqueur drinks and, and other cocktails that we, we sell um, off in our off-sales department. We see that as a, a building that we would like to create an off-sales for our own, own branded drinks and perhaps mm. premium drinks that we can buy in from small distilleries that you don't see in supermarkets. So that's where we see that, that the use of that building and maybe a, 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 a small coffee shop so you can drop in, have a coffee, see what we've got to offer and maybe just go outside in the beer garden and and chill out, maybe then go back in and decide that you want to buy one of the one of the bottles that we make. So at the end of the day, it's all about people and a, a bit of a getaway and just enjoying life. Eh? Would, would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, uh, the approach to pubs, I think, has changed um, enormously over the last uh, 10 years. Um, I see uh, a business like this being a social hub rather than pub. So the word pub is now changing to hub and it's, it's a place for everybody to meet up um, at all ages uh, and to do all different types of things. Mm -hmm. It's not just pool, darts, a football team or whatever. It's every event. We've, 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 like for instance, we've, we've gone to, once we um, uh, rebuild the outdoor area, which I'll come to later, mm -hmm. uh, we'll have big events like clairvoyance mm -hmm. uh, uh, performing here, cabaret um, evenings. I can envisage musical events because the, the business will be a lot bigger I mean we, we currently have just a capacity of just under 500 with a new extension that will bring us over to 700 plus mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I'd love to see some big events that bring a lot of people into the town which not just benefits us it'll benefit the surrounding area the, the high street shops Broad Street even the other uh, pubs and that if there's going to be a lot of people traveling to a big festival type event mm -hmm then they're going to be inquisitive, they're going to go, let's try this pub. So it's going to be a, no, a positive knock-on effect for everyone if I can get this done right. And listen, if you're looking for a, a proper DJ, Dennis, uh, just give me a shout on it time and I'll, 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 get, I'll get a place rocking. I'm sure we'll popping. something. <laughs> now, uh, I want to get back in now because um, I've never touched the subject of your career. When you left school, I, I care nothing about you. No. I, did you just get into pumping at pubs? No. Well, my father's been in business now for oh, nearly 45 years. We bought his first pub at Oak Tree, mm -hmm. and I'd been about seven ish. And we were brought up in pubs. We learned a lot at a time. It was uh, it was the best time to be an a, a, a owner of a pub. The harbour was booming, the fishing industry, mm -hmm. St Fergus was booming, the oil industry was uh, was doing quite well um, and uh, it was a great time as a, as a youngster and, and, and we learned to trade really well, we learned how to deal with people um, and we really enjoyed it but by the time I'd been 16 or so my mother was, wasn't keen on us going into the pub business, mm -hmm. she said go do something, get, do some training, get an education. So I ended up going to Robert Gordon's and doing a, a science degree. Yeah, you've got a science degree. Yeah, are yeah, you kidding me? Yeah. You've been hiding us all this year. Yeah, um, a lot of folk know my, my background because I mean I'm, I'm at 53 this year, so I've, uh, I've, I've had another life back in the day. 
Um, I did the, the, the science degree, I enjoyed it, but it, I didn't see where I was go it was leading. So I then did a postgrad in um, it like it was corrosion engineering, which was a study of engineering and me metallurgy. Mm -hmm. And from there, I, I started working in the oil industry and um, doing consultancy work on, on risk assessments and um, inspection strategies and, and, and analysis of the performance of um, the top side of platforms, uh, which I really enjoyed. Um, I, I worked for several uh, oil companies uh, through the consultancy, mm -hmm. but my heart was never really in it. I don't right. think I was. Yeah, and I was, we were constantly still involved uh, um, whilst I was working in the oil industry with the, the family business was growing. We had, um, had, um, we had bought the Elizabethan, that's nearly 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, my brother started running that and then we bought the DJ's nightclub and my brother ran that as well. And then we bought the ship and, and, and in between times I was working in the oil industry and trying to help out at the weekends where I could and it got to the stage that I had to make a choice. Um, it got to the point that I was working three days out of five for the, oil, the, the company I was working for, mm -hmm. who were very generous. I got the same salary yep. for working three days out of five, which was very good. And then I spent the rest of the time working the family business. So uh, at that point I thought, no, I'm going to have to make a decision. So I ended up uh, managing the Elizabethan, um, took that uh, responsibility away from my mm -hmm. folks and got involved with the family business uh, and, uh, and, and everything took off from there. Now, this, this science thing, has this helped you get us cocktails? Because you've been, you've been making a lot of cocktails lately now. Is that a part of that science that's came back in to help? Without a doubt, it's, it's played a big part in my understanding how to develop the, um, the range of liqueurs that we make and the, the new drinks we make uh, because obviously I've got a uh, chemistry background. Um, so it did give me a, a, you know, a platform to work on. But, uh, but I went back to um, uh, Robert Gordon's um, oh, after a few years of working at uh, the Elizabethan. I was actually mm -hmm. at that point running uh, the DJ's nightclub as well. Uh, I went back and did a postgrad in business management mm -hmm. and I think that was the most significant thing that I did. I mean I, I really enjoyed it mm -hmm. uh, and I learned a lot about marketing, understanding business, the professionalism of running a business. So you're, you're quite an academic guy, you like studying and getting all the information and researching, would, would I that be right? I really enjoy doing that and that's mm -hmm. probably what helps us in, in trying to develop uh, cheers. Um, I, I try to be open-minded, I try to be like try to be a bit visionary. I know it's a small town, but it doesn't stop us from, um, uh, you know, being good. But I think this is what marks you very exciting. Your, your products, you're always coming up with your unicorns or your uh, different gins, am I mm. right? And the whiskies, you're a big fan of the whiskies and that. And I'll it's tell you if it's missing. I haven't seen a trifle, a sticky trifle uh, kind of liqueur. Ah, we we actually did. I've actually, uh, I tried, we did buy one in, which was quite nice, and then uh, I created a vodka liqueur with a uh, sticky toffee pudding flavouring, oh, wow. which was quite nice. It's uh, it, 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 you can just imagine it's got a toffee taste to it. Um, it never really took off. Um, I did try it with um, as a shot with a, a whipped cream at the top and some chocolate sprinkles, but... Um, you maybe had had a proper sticky trifle. Uh, something. Dinner. We did sell it uh, in the kitchen. It was always <laughs> popular, sticky trifle food and salt. Always been popular in this area. But yeah, um, come back to, to um, um, you know, the education's definitely helped me <laughs> um, uh, uh, going forward. There's no doubt about that. Now, the other problem we you being a good study and researcher, uh, I wonder about uh, your mental mindset, first of time to relax, do you chill out? There, there's, there's periods that are, are, are relaxed, I mean, I mean most of the time just now it's, it's full on, I'm, I'm, I'm working on the Cheer Spirits brands with mm -hmm. all the different liqueurs and we're introduction of the, the Venom mini kegs and bottles in the last few weeks have been a tremendous success and we see a mm -hmm. lot of growth in that. I'm working on um, a, 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 an online site. There's a lot of legalities to look into that with um, mm. transportation of uh, alcohol if you're buying some, purchasing something online. So there's always something keeping me busy, but once I've finished all these projects, I then take a minute to myself. I don't go mm. you know, 24 seven all mm. the time because you'd really find yourself so exhausted. So would it be safe to say you, wor you work for each of us ideas, you can, you can get it sorted out, you get it going, 
and then you take up a wee bit of time you have to write, oh, day you have to write every project. After you've got it up and running and you think it's, well, we can leave it just a wee minute just now and see how it takes off, mm. uh, you give, give yourself some breathing space, that's really important and, and probably this time I, I enjoy doing uh, keep fit and training, uh, the, the, um, and like circuit training and, mm -hmm. uh, and the likes and I'll probably go back into that, watch my diet. Um, and just ease off, spend a bit more time with mm -hmm. the, the, the family. I've got two boys, yeah, but it doesn't last long. I, and again, when your boys and big mm -hmm. fan of him, uh, very nice uh, guy going to be, I cannot for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so, like your hobbies and interests, um, f f kind of person are you? Are you a person, uh, are you an outdoors kind of person? Or are you quite happy being in a house? What kind of guy are you? Like we locked down, how... how mm -hmm. uh, well, with the lockdown, funnily enough, somebody had said, oh, um, you have, won't have much on your plate just now, you know, nothing's happening. And I said, oh, it's the complete opposite. I've been constantly working. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing I did was bring clean the entire business myself, obviously, all the old staff's furloughed, so I basically scrubbed everything down, and mm -hmm. uh, I thought, well, that's fine. I've got um, bits and bobs done that I wouldn't have never gotten done. I try to be really positive about it. Once everything was clean, it's spotless. Mm -hmm. I then uh, looked into the, um, the, the the phase one project, or the, the high street project, yep. and put that in place. We got the the, the plans submitted for that. Uh, so I'm constantly still looking for the next job, and I thought we could be closed for some time here. I need mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. that to keep you going. That will keep us going. Yes, right. uh, another uh, another uh, type of business, and this is where the concept to try and get in, um, create a, our own brands. Mm -hmm. And people love something different, something unique. I mean, you can go to the supermarkets, get the, the mainline spirits, whether it's Melnif, Gordon's, the mm -hmm. Grouse, whatever, and the, the the vast selection of gins now. But people like something that's unique. Mm -hmm. And we've created, what I think, that a, a, a range of drinks are really tasty. Um, and I've went out my way to make them as, as best as possible. Um, it's something that you would look forward to drinking. Uh, so, I mean, that's that's kept me busy as well. Mm -hmm. So I've always got something to do. So to be honest, I'm, I'm probably busier now but than I would have been before in the yep. lockdown. Mm -hmm. And speaking about uh, the lockdown for something this year, which was so unexpected, fits your personal take, uh, and we'll watch what we're saying here, mm -hmm. but fits your personal take on a social distancing. Do you think it's important? Do you think folks should be one metre apart? Or does it, should there maybe only social distancing rules? How do you feel? Um, I'm going to sit on the fence here. Um, you, you, the, the, was it the, the World Health Organization, WHO, Since said one, one metre, mm -hmm. uh, but then the scientists and those that know say two metres makes all the difference, it's four times uh, less risk if it's two metres. I don't know, I can tell you that the social distancing um, uh, is going to be a major problem going forward for um, businesses like myself. Mm -hmm. two, two metres is a bit too far. We're lucky that Cheers is expansive, it's big, we'll be able to um, um, have quite a few people in here even even though there's a two metre um, uh, distance, but it's it's not going to It's, it's not viable I, I think because see if, if in, you're out and having a drink Dennis, most folk, uh, because folk can have been out in a long time, the first thing you want to do is you want somebody to say, oh, like, how's it? And mm -hmm. you'd be kind of, kind of like patting them off mm -hmm. at the So to me, I don't think it's going to work in the pubs. For, but I shouldn't say that, but I do feel that it's going to be very hard for people having a drink to okay. not have contact. Do you care what I mean? As in, or am I wrong saying that? Do you think I'm wrong? Well, it all depends on how you go about putting your health and safety measures in place. Mm -hmm. um, like, I come back. Uh, like I said earlier on, um, my background was risk assessments and um, that's something I'm trained to, to look into. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I do, I've got a right risk assessment for COVID-19 for, for the business mm -hmm. uh, and um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you just now what my plans are. Although we're outdoor air is expansive, it holds, uh, I think it's about 150, mm -hmm. we'll probably accommodate around 50 people, so that's about mm -hmm. a third. Uh, implement in the two meter distance. Yep. So we envisage about seven tables uh, on the main outdoor and two in the smoking area, so nine, possibly ten. Mm -hmm. There can be four to six people in that tables. Now that's um, the capacity level that we're looking at. The, the tables need to be um, booked in advance. Mm -hmm. There'll be a time limitation for that table. Mm -hmm. 
so that gives everybody a chance to come in uh, and you know I'm not excluding anybody mm -hmm. uh, when you come up the lane there'll be two meter um, distance mm -hmm. and stripes for you uh, mm -hmm. to, to adhere to when you come into the door it'll be locked you can't just go back and forth yep, okay. um, you come to the door there's a number to phone to let us know that you're coming because we're not going to have someone standing there all the time mm -hmm. door will be opened you'll come in you come to the bar and then you'll be asked to to clean your hands with hand sanitizer and escorted to your table. Mm -hmm. uh, at all times you wear a face mask until you reach your table. Mm -hmm. Then you, you're with, with the, within your social bubble you can do as you please. Yep. The minute you stand up to go to the toilet the, the face mask goes back on. You go to the toilet, you wash your hands with hand sanitizer prior to going to the toilet and you do the same coming back. Now that hand sanitizer point will be at the bar, so there'll be someone yep. watching okay. doing that. Right, okay. That negates any kind of situation where someone's going to the toilet and not washing their mm -hmm. hands. Mm -hmm. Because if they didn't do that, we're still catching them. Uh, if, again, if people are passing, they have to look through their way mm -hmm. yeah, and not directly within, right. you know, if they're not two yep. metres. Okay. So that's some of the measures we're going to be putting in place. So you can mm -hmm. see that it's possible. Aye, it's definitely possible and it's great you're coming up with us plans and the risk assessments. So, at the end of the day, fun do you think this place would be totally back to normal? Or do you think that's not going to happen for other year? That's difficult to say. What do you reckon? Um, I can't see this social distancing going away in the short term. Do you um, think by Christmas it'll still be in place? I'm, I'm speaking to a lot of people that believe that come uh, uh, November uh, it, it'll be back to normal. I don't think so. Mm. I think we're going to be in this si this situation uh, for another. I would say March, March, right, okay. April. Yep. Uh, uh, it may be longer. It'll depend on the vaccine, etc. Uh, and a lot of people say, "Well, the government's everybody get back going," and I'm, I totally understand that. But I had a conversation with somebody yesterday, and I said, "What's going to be the driving factor here is insurance companies. If people are putting claims in." that they've taken this, they've got the, the, the virus, mm -hmm. they've taken mm -hmm. really ill, do they claim against a business? Mm -hmm. What happens with staff? Um, what happens if somebody dies? Yeah, but there's so much, there's is there? so many so aspects much. to look at. And I would say the government will be concerned about that um, because imagine if the, the, the insurance companies then claimed against the government, mm -hmm. they've had to pay out all this and then they hold the government responsible for allowing this mm -hmm. to happen. Uh, there's a lot more uh, um, things to look into, permutations, if you want to say. Um, it's not going to be just a simple thing. Let's just open the herd, what's they called it? The, the, the expression, when they say the herd um, expression, the, the people were, anybody can get it, let everybody Like get herd, it. Immunity. herd immunity. Herd immunity, yeah. okay. Yeah, um, the, 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 the thing that's going to be the, the way forward. Who knows? I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not in any position mm -hmm. to say but we're going to do going forward. If they tell me I have to do something, mm -hmm. I've just got to abide by the rules. And I think just now, I think we've got an idea to going forward. Get we'll it. just to take it from there. But uh, at the end of the day in our day, Dennis, um, we've got to be sensible in our, have we? For, we've got to, I think a lot of people, um, some folk take us really serious. Some folk, oh no, you can't, can't come too close and that. But, if we need to be sensible now and like getting back to normality, we need to get back to normality for in interaction. It's really important that we get back to normality mm -hmm. for people's uh, sanity. To it be marks honest. us human. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, Have you felt a bit of sadness, by the way, in a lockdown and all? Because I've had certain days of sadness. I, I think if I didn't keep myself busy, that's the key thing yeah, for right. me. I've basically got up in the morning worked. If, if I've not been working, I've got my boys. Um, I'm always active, so I've not had a time to just sit down and reflect uh -huh. uh, how things aren't so well. I mean, it's not good for pubs, it's not good for hotels, anybody yep. in hospitality, it's not good. Uh, you've just got to make the best of it, and I'm trying to do that. Uh, I think if I was to sit and dwell, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be in a good way. No, I, no. And that, that's, uh, anybody in lockdown cooked up in a house, She's got the TV in the four walls. Aye, yep. I think that's re a really difficult situation. So coming back to the point of people getting out there and socialising, mm -hmm. I think that's going to be really important. And the sooner we've got mechanisms in place, you know, that it's that we're following the rules, we've been given good advice uh -huh. and it's reasonable advice, 
then the better. Um, again, coming back to the, the social distancing, if it comes down to one metre, I think that'll be a, a, a big difference. I think it would be very helpful eh, for Abdi. Right, um, so thank you for being on, and hopefully mm -hmm. you don't have to get another 18, 17, 18 year to appear again. <laughs> Yeah, it's the last time we've had a talk. Then. Um anyway, I should say cheers uh, to you. Thank you very much. Okay. And cheers, bud. all the best for the future and mm -hmm. let's hope we see us place buzzing again. Okay, thanks and uh, flashing lights and the music and uh, pub goers back to normal. And you behind the, the DJ booth. Huh? And me behind the DJ booth. And I'll do it for free. <laughs> okay. I'll hold you. <laughs> right, to that. thank you very much, Dennis. Cheers. And we'll see us later on in a sticky trifle. Sticky, sticky trifle. trifle. Bye. <laughs>'ll podcast will return next week stay positive until next week bye